Close your eyes for a moment and imagine a strange planet, larger than Earth, with endless blue oceans shimmering under the light of a distant star, icy mountains reaching for the sky, or bizarre creatures living in the shadows of that world. Now open your eyes, because we're about to embark on a journey to these wondrous worlds. Welcome to the Astreon Channel. Today, I'm taking you on a cosmic adventure into the world of super-Earths. What are these planets? Why are scientists obsessed with them day and night? Could we one day find life on one of these worlds? What discoveries have we made? Have we found our next home? I'll explain everything in simple terms, even if you've only ever gazed at the stars in the night sky. Buckle up because we're about to launch into the depths of the Milky Way. Let's start our journey with a simple question. What's a planet? Planets, like Earth, Mars, or Jupiter, are large, round objects that orbit a star and don't produce their own light. Earth is our home, a rocky planet orbiting the Sun, teeming with life. So, what are super-Earths? These are exoplanets, meaning they're outside our solar system, with masses between 1 and 20 times that of Earth. But don't think they're just bigger versions of Earth. Super-Earths are like a cosmic box of crayons. Each one has its own unique color and shape. Some are rocky, like our Earth. Some are gas-filled. Some have deep oceans and others might have thick layers of ice or atmospheres full of water vapor. NASA says that as of October 2024, scientists have discovered 5,573 exoplanets, and many of them are super-Earths. Think about that number for a second. In the Milky Way, with its hundreds of billions of stars, there could be Billions of super-Earths. It's like the universe is a creative chef cooking up all kinds of planets. Now, let's take a closer look at these planets and find out what makes them so special. To truly grasp the essence of a super-Earth, we need to look at their features like cosmic explorers. First up, size and mass. Super-Earths typically have masses between 1 and 20 times that of Earth, and radii 1.2 to 2.5 times Earth's. What about gravity? Gravity is the force that keeps us grounded on Earth, and on Super-Earths, it's a whole different story. Since these planets are more massive, their gravity is usually stronger, but it depends on density too. Let's make it simple with an example. Suppose you weigh 60 kilos on Earth. On a super-Earth with 5 times Earth's mass and 1.5 times its radius, the gravity could be about twice Earth's, so you'd weigh 120 kilos. But if the planet's radius is much larger and its density lower, the gravity might even be less than Earth's. Imagine walking on such a planet. What would it feel like? It's like stepping into a strange world with an odd pull. The atmosphere is another piece of the puzzle. An atmosphere is like a gaseous blanket around a planet, possibly filled with hydrogen, methane, carbon dioxide, or water vapor. Some super-Earths have atmospheres so thick it's like being submerged in fog. The James Webb Telescope, using infrared light, a type of light that reveals heat, has scanned the atmospheres of these planets. For example, on the planet K218b, 120 light years away, it detected water vapor, methane, DMS, and carbon dioxide. This suggests liquid water might exist there, which is crucial for life. But hold on, water vapor alone isn't enough. 
The core and magnetic field have their own story. Many super-Earths have large iron cores, like Earth's heart, which creates a magnetic field through its rotation. This field acts like an invisible shield, protecting the planet's atmosphere from harmful stellar particles or stellar winds. But here's the cool part. Life doesn't always need this shield. On Earth, microbes called extremophiles thrive in places like deep oceans or hot springs without a strong magnetic field. Maybe super-Earths host strange creatures living like this, too. These features show us that super-Earths aren't just big rocks. Each is a unique world with its own story. Now, let's see what role these planets play in the search for life. One of the most exciting things about super-Earths is that many might be suitable for life. Here's an important term, the habitable zone, or Goldilocks zone. This is the region around a star where a planet's temperature is just right. Not too hot for water to evaporate, nor too cold for it to freeze. Why is water so important? Because every living thing we know from microbes to whales, needs liquid water. So, planets in this zone have a higher chance of hosting life. But wait, just being in the habitable zone isn't enough. For a planet to be a home for life, it needs a suitable atmosphere, the right pressure, and chemicals like carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. An article in Nature Astronomy says many super-Earths have been found in this zone, but life needs more than that. For example, if a planet's atmosphere is full of toxic gases, or the pressure is so high that liquid water can't exist, life doesn't stand a chance. Scientists are searching for biosignatures. Gases like oxygen, methane, or carbon dioxide that, in specific amounts, might indicate life. For instance, on K218b, the James Webb Telescope found methane and carbon dioxide, and even a tiny hint of a gas called dimethyl sulfide, which on Earth is produced only by living organisms. But we can't say there's life yet. It's just a clue that's got scientists buzzing. Life on super-Earths might be totally weird. Maybe creatures like Earth's extremophiles, which survive in boiling water or polar ice, exist there too. Or perhaps there are beings that get energy from the heat of underwater volcanoes instead of starlight. What do you think life on a super-Earth might look like? Tiny microbes? Or bizarre creatures we can't even imagine? Now, let's take a closer look at a few of these thrilling super-Earths. We've talked a lot about super-Earths, but let's visit a few like real astronauts. These planets are confirmed, and each has a fascinating story. LHS 1140b This rocky planet, 49 light years away, sits in the habitable zone of a small star called a red dwarf. The James Webb Telescope shows it has a thick atmosphere and might have water vapor. Scientists think it could have oceans on its surface, but they're not sure yet. Its gravity is about 1.5 times Earth's, so if you weigh 60 kilos, you'd feel like 90 kilos. Tweyai is a 715b, 138 light years away. This planet, with a radius 1.5 times Earth's, is in the habitable zone of another small star. The suitable distance of TOI 715b from its host star allows it to potentially have the right conditions for liquid water, but this has not been definitively confirmed yet. K218b, 124 light years away, with a mass eight times Earth's, 
This is one of the most exciting super-Earths. The James Webb Telescope found water vapor, methane, and carbon dioxide in its atmosphere. It might have a massive ocean or an atmosphere thick with water vapor. Scientists are carefully studying it to see if there are signs of life. Now, let's see why these planets are so diverse. Now that we've talked so much about super-Earths, you might wonder, how do scientists find these planets so far away? The answer is cutting-edge tools and a bit of scientific magic. Let's look at a few main methods. The transit method. When a planet passes in front of its star, the star's light dims slightly, like someone standing in front of a lamp casting a shadow. The Kepler and TESS telescopes have found hundreds of super-Earths this way. It's like the universe is winking at us. The Radial Velocity Method A planet's gravity makes its star wobble slightly. Instruments like HARPS measure these tiny wobbles, like checking the star's heartbeat. Gravitational Microlensing some planets amplify the light of distant stars like a cosmic magnifying glass. The planet Ogle 2016 BLG 1195 LB was discovered this way. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. The James Webb Telescope, like a cosmic microscope, analyzes planets' atmospheres with infrared light and has detected gases like water vapor. These tools have taken us from a simple world to discovering all these strange planets. Now, let's see why these planets matter so much to us. Super-Earths aren't just pretty distant planets. They're the key to understanding the cosmos. First, they help us figure out how planets form. When a star is born, a disk of gas and dust forms around it, like cosmic dough. This material clumps together to create planets. The first exoplanet was discovered in 1992 around a strange star called a pulsar. In 1995, the first planet orbiting a regular star was found. Then, the Kepler telescope, from 2009 to 2018, swept through the cosmos like a vacuum cleaner, finding tons of planets. The TESS telescope has added many more to the list by 2024. Instruments like HARPS and ESPRESSO have recorded stars' wobbles with incredible precision. So far, we've found over 5,900 planets, some of which are super-Earths, and some might even be better suited for life than Earth. What's next? The Plato Telescope from the European Space Agency is set to launch in 2026 and will find even more planets. NASA's observatory in the 2030s will study planetary atmospheres in greater detail. These tools are like golden keys that might finally answer the question, is life in the cosmos unique to us? We explore the deep oceans of super-Earths, their strange atmospheres, and the chance of finding life. These planets seem to be telling us that the universe is full of wonders, and we've only seen a tiny corner of it. Do you think we'll one day walk on a super-Earth? Or find strange creatures staring back at us?